Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for December 17, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, VM Building Society reopens a full ABM network. The VM Building Society on Friday reopened its network of automated banking machines for public use after last month announcing a temporary closure of the banking chaos. We are pleased to have our 32 ABMs Allen White again be made available to our members and other users on the Multilink network. We understand and regret the inconvenience that the necessary closure caused, and we are happy to have all our ABMs reopened in time for the busy Christmas period, VMBS Chief Executive Officer Paul Elliott stated in a release. The financial institution had indicated when it closed the ABMs that the move was due to an uptick in the detection of attempts to compromise its ABM network and as a result stemmed in to protect and ensure the safety of our members' information and their investments. At the time, the Building Society advised its members to continue using their VM Express 24 debit cards at the point of sale touch points and at Multilink's network of over 800 ABMs. VMBS also waived all fees for transactions done using other touch points. For the duration of the closure, the company's teams implemented solutions to help mitigate the threat posed to its ABM network. With the restoration of the service, VMBS noted that debit card fees that were suspended during the closure have been reinstated since Friday. At the same time, the VMBS CEO is recommending that its members and the general public take precaution when using any ABM. We of course continue to urge everyone using ABMs to be very vigilant and to ensure that you use one hand to cover the other when entering your PIN into the machine. Be mindful of your surroundings at all times and report any suspicious activity to your financial institution immediately, he said. Police now open murder probe into death of Julian Silvero's wife. Six weeks after Melissa Silvero, the wife of former People's National Party Member of Parliament, Jolene Silvero, reportedly passed in her sleep, her death is now being investigated as a possible murder. After the post-mortem, it was discovered that she was shot at least three times, Deputy Commissioner of Police, in charge of crime and the security fits Bailey, told the news on Saturday afternoon. We just started an investigation into the matter. We became aware of it on Friday evening, and we are doing our investigation. That's as much as we can see, Bailey said. The news had contacted Bailey after Nationwide News Network reported the development and said that the former member of Parliament for St. Mary Western has retained the services of an attorney. Nationwide News Network also reported that Silvera was interviewed by the police. Last evening, a law enforcer told the news that the police who had gone to the house after Melissa Silvera's death on November 10 are in trouble. The first thing when you as a police go on the scene of a sudden death is to check the body for marks of violence, the law enforcer, who opted not to be named, told the news. It's impossible for anybody to ignore three bullet wounds, and for something like that there must be blood splatter. So those police who went there must be under investigation, the law enforcer said. At the time of Melissa Silvera's death, PNP President Mark Golden had expressed sympathy. My sincere condolences to comrade Jolene Silvera on the loss of his wife Melissa, who passed away last night. Keeping your entire family in our prayers during this most difficult time, Golden posted on social media. Jolene Silvera, who chairs the PNP's Founders Group, exchanged the wedding vows with Melissa in December 2015. In 2017, they suffered the heartbreaking loss of their two-year-old son, Justin, when he drowned in a pool at their Stony Hill St. Andrew home. Cold front expected to bring rain across Jamaica A cold front is expected to move across Jamaica on Monday, while a trough is expected to remain across the island over the next few days. As a result, cloudy conditions with periods of showers and thunderstorms are expected across most parishes on Monday and Tuesday, according to the Meteorological Service of Jamaica. Sections of most parishes are also expected to experience periods of showers and thunderstorms Sunday afternoon and evening, the Met Office said.
403 killed in road crashes up to December 15, says RSU. Road fatalities across the 400 mark this week, with 403 deaths registered as of Friday, December 15, after seven more road users lost their lives during the one-week period. Among the latest fatalities were three motorcyclists, two of whom were teenagers, both male aged 17 and 18 years old, who perished in separate crashes. Also killed during the week were two passengers of private motor cars, one pedestrian, and one passenger of a public passenger vehicle. The Road Safety Unit is reporting that the 403 fatalities, as at December 15, resulted from 365 fatal crashes. Of note is that fatal crashes have decreased by 9%, while fatalities are down 13% when compared with a similar period in 2023. With 15 days to go before the end of the year, the RSU is projecting that the current 13% decrease in fatalities will hold. A total of 488 people were killed on the nation's roads in 2022. Males and females account for 88% and 12% respectively of the road fatalities as of December 15, 2023. Judge orders man to live with a baby mother while on bail. Senior parish judge Lauren Cole Montague on Thursday ordered a man who is on trial for hitting his baby mother to live with her as a condition of his bail. The woman who filed a complaint against her children's father, Kadeen Luden, told the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday that she needs his help to raise their children. It hard on me because I had to get the babies ready this morning. Be at them, get them food to eat, get myself ready so that I could come to court this morning, the woman shared. She added that although he assaulted her, she has engaged the counseling services of the family court and indicated that she would not be going further with the criminal matter. There's another counseling session and I would like to give it a try. Just don't lock him up. I want him to live with me, she told the court. It is alleged that on October 1, an argument about the children turned physical between the complainant and the loaden. He allegedly hit her all over her body, causing bruising and the swelling. The couple have two children, ages one and eight months. However, Loden does not live at the complainant's home as he is not comfortable there because she accuses him of infidelity and argues constantly. Could you appreciate that she could be very stressed out from having the two children? You see that sometimes you hear women saying certain things. Sometimes it's a cry for attention. Sometimes it's a cry for help. It is a cry for affection, Cole Montague said. I don't think it is fair for all the person to carry this stress. And that is why, sir, I will encourage you to help with the two children, the judge indicated. She subsequently asked, would you, Loden, be willing to give it a try at the house? But Loden insisted that he doesn't want to go to her house. Madam, make the home comfortable. Make it a space that he will not run from. Fix up the place nice, the judge counseled. Loden was offered $20,000 bail in his own surety and a condition attached that he is to reside at the complainant's home starting on December 16. The matter was adjourned until January 5, 2024, when the matter is set for mention. If she does anything during that time, you can report it to the police, and that would be sufficient for you to come out of the condition. Madam, do not be contangorous. Sometimes walk away. Control your emotions, the judge warned the couple.